kind of, this is your first time on the ladder, isn't it? So be nice to Joanna, all right? This is her first time. You be nice to Joanna. Okay, Joanna, we're going to talk about sin and salvation. Now, that's important to you, isn't it? Okay, so we're all born with sin, and I have got salvation from my sin through Jesus. Amen. Okay, so oh. we're all agreed that everybody is sinful, right? Yes. Everybody agrees to that. Yes. There is no one that's sinless. Yes. Well, there was one who was sinless. But not today, not here, not at Speaker's Corner. Okay, so we agree with that. But so if we're all in sin, what does Islam say about salvation? Well, that's what's very interesting. In the Quran, it says that um, you have angels on each shoulder that will report your deeds. So you need to work off your bad deeds, your sins, with your good deeds. Okay, so you have an angel yep. that records your good deeds yep. on this shoulder. Another angel that records your bad deeds. It's yep. like a bank account. It is. <laughs> Debits and credits. Yep. Back and forth. Not in the Bible. Not in the Bible. It's the Quran. It's the Quran. We told me why it's not. You will have your deeds weighed on a scale. So then that determines if you have enough good deeds, you'll get into paradise. If you don't, and that's in Surah 7. 8 and 10. 8 and 10. Okay, Surah 7. Surah 8. Surah 7, verse verses 8. Verses 8 to 10. So you can see it in the Quran. It talks about the recording angels on both sides. Okay? There's also major sins and minor sins. That's in 431. But the thing is, Muhammad didn't know where he would be when he died. And it says that in 46 and verse 9. Okay, so that's Surah Ayah 46, verse 9. Muhammad is himself doesn't know. Read that, what it says there. Say, I am not a new thing among the messengers, nor do I know what I will be done with me or with you. I only follow that is revealed to me, and I am but a plain warner. Okay, so he didn't know whether or not this is the greatest of all prophets, the seal of all prophets, and he didn't even know if he had assurance of salvation. We had just a, this last week a regular Muslim who used to come here for years. He just died last week. I don't need to give his name. Those who are watching know who he is. He was a regular from Sudan here at Speaker's Corner. And one of the great speakers here at Speaker's Corner wrote an eulogy to him. And in the eulogy, he said, I don't know if I'm going to meet you in heaven. You don't know if you're going there. I don't know if I'm going to get there. He was then reflecting what this says. No Muslim knows that whether or not they're going to get there. They have no assurance of whether they're going to get there. Because Muhammad didn't even have assurance. But now, let me ask you, sir, you, do you have assurance of salvation? Because Jesus died, yes. Okay, as a Christian, you have assurance, yes. right? Ask him. Do you have assurance of salvation? No, not even you. Ah, I'm sir, he doesn't have assurance. <laughs> but I do. No, you don't. Yes, yes, I do. Yes. And he does. I do. Every Christian here does. I do, I do, yes. Only the Muslim does not. So oh, keep it here, Jesus he's being consistent. But we can see that because of Surah 46, Ayah 9. Let's go on, what else did it say? Okay, so there are three options that Allah gives in the Quran. What might happen to you when you die? What will happen to your sin? So the first option is in Surah 4, verse 57. And it says that you may accept your good deeds. And those who do good deeds may enter into paradise. So That's one option. The first option is Muhammad will accept your good deeds, that's what is recorded by the angel on your right shoulder, and accept them as worthy enough to have worked off your salvation. So if you do enough, baraka, 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 you will then go to heaven. One question, one question. On this subject. No, we're, we're, we're not on this subject. Sorry, sorry. The no, Rabbis will be off on many tangents. Sorry. The other option of the Quran is that Allah will forgive your sins. He will forgive your sins, it for, says. With doing nothing. With nothing. It doesn't cost a thing. No, but a cheap forgiveness. What does it smell? But he will get, forgive your sins, it says that in 331, but only your lesser he sins. 431, but only if you avoid the bigger sins in 
53 and 32. So Surah 53, I of 32, not N32. Surah 53, I of 32. Otherwise, it looks like you're doing two Surahs. Always Surah 53, I of 32, Surah 4, I of 31, and Surah 3, I of 31. Say that this, only the lesser sins can he forgive, not the greater sins. So you've got a problem here. The third option is that Allah will just condemn you. You'll be condemned. It says that God loves not the aggressor. In Surah 2, Ayah 190. So we've got three options. You will get into paradise by your good works. Allah might forgive your sins. Or you'll be condemned. Yet Muhammad didn't know where he would be. No, did the speaker done here at Speaker's Corner? Now there's our gentleman over here. No, where he's going to be. Where you going? Where you going? Where you going? Where you going? I know where I'm going. And you know where you're going. Where you going? And all of us are going to be with Jesus. Jesus. I love that. Where you going? Heaven. Now how do we know that? We need to go back to the Bible. We need to go back to our authority. We've now gone to the Quran to see where the Muslims are going. Now let's go back and see what the Bible says. Where is your evidence that heaven exists? Jehenna. Jehenna, yes. Apologies, Mr. Apologies. Mr. Apologies, where is your evidence that heaven exists? That's hell. Jehenna is paradise, Jehenna is hell. Now let's guess, what do we have? As Christians. Well, we know that we have all sins and we all fall short of the glory of God. But you say God, God sins so and he kills us. We have all sins. We can't be in Say that again. So, what does the Bible say again? We have all sins. So, everybody has sinned. Everybody has fallen short of the glory of God. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So, the wages of even one sin. You're just saying, listen, it was only one sin that Adam and Eve did. And they were thrown out of God's present. Not a whole slew of sin, just one sin. You know, that's why I don't like fruit. You know, I, on the back of my Apple computer, I have to cover it up. Because I'm so embarrassed by that one sin. So there's not a thing we can do about it. There's not a thing you can do about it. There's not a thing he or he can do about it. It doesn't matter how many good deeds that we record on our right shoulder. Jesus never sinned. Oh, I love it. Jesus is the sinless one. And it means it had to be someone who had never sinned, who had to die in our place. Because we as sinners could not take care of that sin. Answer my question. We as sinners could not take care of our own sin. Who is it that has to take care of our sin, of our sin? It had to be he he was sinned against. And every sin we do does it not sin against God as well. And what is that sin? And how is that sin going to be taken care of? But before that, what does it say in Leviticus 17? In Leviticus 17, it gives the answer. And it says, for those who are... What's the word? Radio J, radio turn J off. Redeem, what's the word? Switch it off. I forgot the word. Atonement. Atone. For the atonement of sin can come by one way and one way alone. And what is it? Blood must be shed. Life must be given. So someone's blood must be shed. Someone's life must be given. But whose blood? Yours? No. Yours? No. His? No. His? No. His? No. It has to be he who is sinned again. The sinless one. And who is the sinless one? Why should I talk to you? Who are you? I want to talk to somebody who knows what I'm talking about. And let's go with that. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to get to heaven. I have a little bit of my steak on my plate when I reach. But I can't wait for the pie in the sky when I die. Yes. Sir, could you get my bag, please? My bag, could you? Thank you, thank you. Just hold on. Hold on. Okay, now let's go through as we continue this. So what we have seen here is that there has to be, for said, there has to be blood shed. There has to be life given. But not just any blood, not just any life. It had to be the sinless one. 
the one who is without guilt. Now, let me ask you, in the history of mankind, is there anybody who was sinless? Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Only Jesus. Can you prove that? Yes. Using both the Quran yes. and the Bible. Yes. yes, we can. Both the Quran and the Bible talk about one person. Where in your Quran does it talk about the sinless one? Jesus was a human being, right? No, he was more than a human being. Because every human sins. Isn't that correct? Yeah. Did Jesus sin? No. Thank you. And how do you know that? Because of Surah 19, Ayah 19. Surah 19, Ayah 19. Issa, the righteous one. What, what does righteous mean? Like, he might do something wrong, but he's not aware of that he's doing something wrong. What does righteous mean? What does righteous mean? Righteous basically means like, if he knows something wrong, why he knew something Now don't give us a sermon. Tell us the definition of righteous. I'm, I'm what does righteous mean? No, 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 no. Answer the question. Even, look, look, look. Brother, brother. I'm not, I'm not talking about He history. doesn't want to answer. Want to talk to me. Come but on. we know the answer. Righteous means sinless. Yep. Okay? Without sin. And that's why we go back to both the Quran and both the Bible. They both tell us that there has been only one in the history of mankind. Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14. Remember Isaiah. He's a great prophet. And he says, for this shall be a sign, Joanna. A virgin will con... Oh, hold on a minute. Joanna, virgins don't conceive. Not in my world, they don't. Now, let me ask you, do virgins conceive in this world? No! Have you ever heard of a virgin conceiving? No! If they conceive, they're no longer virgin! No! So how can Isaiah know what he's talking about? Was a guy stupid? No! Did he make an error? No! Or did he know what he was talking about? Because that's the sign, isn't it? Knowing that this does not happen in humankind, knowing that whatever a virgin conceived, wake up people! That's the sign, isn't it? When that sign comes, now remember, Isaiah said this 800 years before Jesus was born. That is another 1,500 years before your prophet came to earth. Isaiah said a sign will be given. A virgin will conceive and will bear a son. Not a girl, but a boy. And what will he be called? Emmanuel. Now, what does Emmanuel mean? God with us. So when the virgin conceives, God is with us. That is God that comes down to earth. Yes. That's the miracle. Yes. And that's why Muslims need to wake up. Because that's in your Quran, in Surah 19, Ayah 20, that Mary was a virgin when she conceived. Answering the prophecy that Isaiah had 800 years earlier. Oh, I love my Bible. I love Isaiah. So let me ask you. It's not really anything we can do, is it? What if I'm the best person in the world? Are you saying Mother Teresa is not good enough? Are you saying Mahatma Gandhi is not good enough? Are you saying Billy Graham is not good enough? You can't find anybody that's good enough even today. Are you saying that Mother Teresa sinned? Yes. And got Mahatma Gandhi sin? Yes. Are you saying Billy Graham sin? Yes. Be careful, there's some people that follow Billy Graham right there. Was he a sinner, Billy Graham? Absolutely. And you're a sinner too. That means that Billy Graham cannot save himself. And you cannot save yourself. There's not a thing you can do. Except one person can. You need someone to do it for you. And who is it that can die for us? Who who is it that can take on that sin? Joanna, who is that? What's his name? Jesus! Say it with gusto! Jesus! Come on, do it louder than that! Jesus! Jesus! Oh, I love that name! It always comes back to him, isn't it? Amen. It's the only way, and you can have complete assurance in Complete assurance, because of Jesus Christ. The, the sin and salvation, you know where you're going. And what is it you have to do? What's the one thing you have to do? Do you have to pay some money? Accept Jesus, trust him. So that's it. 
You just have to accept that he died on the cross and rose again for your sin. There's nothing more you have to do. There doesn't cost you a cent. Folks, can you see? Joanna has assurance of salvation. Those Muslims who do not know where they're going are not sure whether they will get to heaven. Please come back to Jesus. As long as you know that Jesus died and rose again and took care of your sin, eradicated your sin, gave you salvation, you're going to be with him forever. Amen. You can have that assurance right now. It's not pie in the sky when you die. It's assurance, your steak on your plate while you wait. Oh, I love it. That's why we love to come here every Sunday and talk about Jesus. Folks, we'll see you next week. Joanna, your first time on Ladder. God bless you. You did a great job. Good on you. Patrick, you're next.